Today, we are upgrading Meta AI with Llama 3. After teasing Llama 3B for quite some time and also teasing his new gold chain, Zuck has finally released Llama 3, which is completely incredible. We didn't really know what to expect. Of course, we knew it would be better or at least a step change forward compared to Llama 2, but this new Llama 3 model is actually completely obliterating closed source models like Cloud Sonnet. It's undoubtedly dethroned Mistral 7B as the previous leader in open source AI. And quite frankly, what it's achieved with such a small GPU cluster and basically just better data is absolutely astounding and astounding in a good way. So how good is this model? Is it actually better than some of the other leaders in the open source arena? What models are we getting today? What do we still have to look forward to that wasn't released today? And is Meta the new king of open source AI? Welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So today, ironically, some of the first hints of this release were from places you wouldn't expect. We kind of knew this was coming because initially Microsoft actually accidentally said Meta Llama 3 8B Instruct was going to be available basically two hours before it was officially released. And the real bean spilling was with Replicate where they actually added pricing for Meta Llama 3 also this morning. And of course, everyone was excited waiting to see what we'd get. And ironically, it's funny that Meta seems to just not care about this. I think it might be kind of a meme as to how they accidentally, in air quotes, announced the first llama. And I think it's kind of cool. Obviously, they're never going to be as cool as our French developers at Mistral, but they're trying really hard. So what did Meta actually release today? So Meta in this tweet pretty much says they've released Meta Llama 3, the most capable openly available LLM to date, and they're not even going to make you pay for it like Stability AI. Today we're releasing 8B and 70B models that deliver on new capabilities, such as improved reasoning and set a new state of the art for models of their sizes. So today they're obviously only releasing two models, and it's a little cheeky that they're releasing an 8 billion parameter model where 7 billion parameters was clearly the previous kind of accepted state of the art for open source. And they say in the coming months, we expect to introduce new capabilities, longer context windows, additional model sizes, and enhanced performance. So even more performance than we're seeing today with these two releases. And, and they also plan to later release their research paper that drive the improvements we're seeing in these models. Their blog offers a little more information, and we also have benchmarks on day one, which is something I really like to see. I think it's kind of annoying when we get these releases, and then there's sort of a, an open question as to how well they actually performed when we know internally they've been benchmarking these for months on end. So again, the key takeaways here are these two models are available already. They're going to be baked into AWS, Databricks, Google Cloud, and basically any cloud worth deploying on, including HyperStack. And like all these models have to say, they're dedicated to developing Llama 3 in a responsible way. And uh, they're offering various resources to make sure that uh, it doesn't Try to tell someone to do something a little too spicy with a specific focus on actually using this for cybersecurity, which is kind of interesting. And the framing for this is a little bit different as well. They're actually kind of describing the application of this as one of the world's leading AI assistants. So it'll be curious to see what the actual base kind of system prompt is. And they're saying it can boost your intelligence, lighten your load, help you learn things, get things done, and create content. They've also added this as a resource in all of their apps. So right now, if you have WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, this is now kind of the de facto assistant in all of those apps. So what were their goals for Llama 3? Basically, their goals were pretty much to make one that was better than Llama 2. And what's interesting is they clearly wanted to do something that didn't require all of the thousands of H100s that Zuckerberg has procured for Meta in the future. And this is the incredible thing. What they've been able to achieve is that is with actually a relatively decent sized cluster, but there are many companies that have far more resources than Meta and arguably achieve much less. Like what is going on at Google with the hundreds of thousands of supposedly highly advanced TPUs they have and Gemma and Gemini 1.5 are really the best they can give us. You know, you have to wonder. They're also clear that they're only releasing text-based models, but there will be multilingual and multimodal models coming soon that will also represent the capabilities of Llama 3. But what's cool is you can actually try these out in the Meta AI endpoint, which is a kind of a really dumbed down website that lets you use this. So you can actually have it make images and that's kind of cool too. So the performance to call it state of the art, I think is actually a vast understatement. So what's completely insane is that this model is beating both um, 
Cloud 3 Sonnet and Mr. Old Strug, along with Gemma 7B. It's basically matching the performance of Gemini Pro 1.5. We have to see how big the context window is, but what's insane is this is an open source model that we can basically get today. It's the 70B variant. This is not some wild new variant we haven't heard of. And there's actually a much bigger one that, that they're hinting at that is even more powerful than this. So what's crazy is in the poll I had up this morning on the channel, I was pretty much saying like, do you think it's gonna be better than open source or better than closed source? And what's wild is they've delivered something that we can download today that's better than both of them. And that is assuredly a step function in the positive direction for open source AI. And if anything, this wildly clashes with the kind of, I think, nearsighted view uh, Sam Altman has as to what the future of AI will look like. And of course he's biased since he runs OpenAI, but this is an incredibly exciting advancement. And I think Zuck should keep buying new gold chains if it means we keep getting models this good. So they say that in the development of Llama 3, they looked at model performance on standard benchmarks and also sought to optimize performance for real world scenarios. And this is something we've talked about on this channel before, which is, just aiming for benchmarks a lot of times will give you a model that's kind of obtuse and has deep abilities in certain limited areas, but generally speaking, can be harder to interact with and actually use. And what's cool is Facebook or Meta took kind of a different approach here and I think found a really great balance. So again, they've created their own high quality human evaluation set, which is just supposed to gauge how good the model is with more common tasks. So they say that this contains 1800 prompts that cover 12 key use cases like advice, brainstorming, classification, closed question answering, coding, creative writing, extraction, inhabiting a character or persona, so for kind of a creative writing, rewriting and summarization, to name a few. And to prevent accidental overfitting, they've actually employed their own modeling teams to not have access to this, which I think is kind of cool. Because actually that's how people game the open LLM leaderboard, for those of you who don't know. And what's great is these models perform shockingly well. Basically stating that in most cases, the human instruct evaluation was significantly better than comparable models that have been also open sourced or even some that are closed source. The specific one mentioned here is Cloud Sonnet, GPT 3.5, Mistral Medium, and Meta Llama 2. And when we look at pre-trained model performance, the performance just out of the box is insane. Again, clearly beating Gemini Pro 1.0 and even handily having a performance advantage over Mixtral 8x22B. The model architecture is quite interesting, but it's actually really similar to Llama 2. And even more impressively, it's not a mixture of experts model, which has been kind of the go-to structure for both OpenAI's GPT-4 and Mistral AI's 8x7B. Mixtral and Mixtral 8x22B. So what's pretty cool is they have a decoder only transformer architecture. Llama 3 uses a tokenizer with a larger vocabulary than Llama 2, but actually the general structure is really quite similar. The biggest focus was improving the quality of their training data. And a lot of this data was also actually shared from Llama 2. So they say here that to ensure Llama 3 was trained on the data of the highest quality, they developed a series of data filtering pipelines. These kind of help um, direct intent and direction and a number of other factors in data without having to rely on a ton of manual processes or kind of blindly producing synthetic data, which is kind of interesting. There's also a really big mention here of scaling up pre-training and pre-training has been a really, really popular topic when it comes to state-of-the-art open source models. For instance, Command R was a big proponent of this and a number of uh, kind of the Jamba models we see and, a lot, and especially new models coming from Stability AI are really big on pre-training, which is pretty cool. And basically they mentioned that with Chinchilla, one of their more powerful models, they found that the optimal amount of training compute for an 8 billion parameter model corresponds to around 200 billion tokens. And they found that model performance continues to improve even after the model is trained on two orders of magnitude more data. And both both their 8 billion and 70 parameter mo billion parameter models continue to improve log linearly after we train them up on 15 trillion tokens. Larger models can obviously match the performance of these smaller models with less training, but smaller models are preferred because they're more efficient during inference, and that pretty much means that you can use them on smaller GPUs, which is another big trend we've seen with Stability AI, although clearly Llama 3 is more capable than their latest stable LM release. What I really love here is they mention exactly how much 
compute in theory they use to train Llama 3. So they say to train our, our largest Llama 3 models, we combine three types of parallelization, data parallelization, model parallelization, and pipeline parallelization, which pipeline is probably the one people haven't heard of. Their most efficient implementation achieves compute utilization of over 400 teraflops per GPU when trained on 16,000 GPUs simultaneously. They perform training runs on two custom-built 24,000 GPU clusters to maximize uptime and efficiency. They also developed a new advanced training stack that automates error detection, handling, and maintenance, which sounds pretty simple, but this is actually a really easy win that gives you consistent improvements and more value down the road once you have it picked out. There are a lot of companies that farm this out. It's why you go to huge GPU hyperscalers. Um, for instance, Hyperstack is one that actually does a lot of consulting around this. And what's cool is they actually show us what some of these clusters actually look like, at least in terms of their new architecture. And Meta, just given how much they've run Facebook, especially given how advanced their latest generation of their Meta TPU or the Meta Training and Inference Accelerator, which is actually really impressive as well, they have really incredible uh, ultra high speed SS fabrics. So basically a way you can address a ton of SSD storage just over um, a network connection. And it's just not surprising that Meta is completely dominating the space since they've done so much work at a really pretty low level with just server infrastructure and open compute and their, contrib and their contributions there is another really cool thing everyone should look into. So the cool thing here is they were never wasting GPU time. Um, so even though they have a ton of money to buy 24,000 H100s, they know what they know how they want to use them and they've maximized efficiency. So instruction fine tuning is another really big thing that's common in many open source models. It's kind of the first thing people look for if the model release right off the bat is kind of a base model and we want to get there. For instance, we saw this with Mixtral 8x22b. Everyone was just asking, when are we going to get an instruct model? So what's cool is they say here to fully unlock the, pot the potential of our pre-trained models in chat use cases, we innovated on our approach to instruction tuning as well, which includes a, a combination of SFT or, su or supervised fine tuning, um, proximal policy optimization or PPO, which is kind of less talked about, um, DPO, which we've talked about quite a bit on this channel and a few others. And again, they state that their improvements came from what they say are just carefully curated data sets and performing multiple rounds of quality assurance to make sure what they have works. They've also released some pretty cool new infrastructure that helps you build faster with Llama. One of these is Torch Tune and um, updated components that allow you to actually develop more safely. I'm not gonna worry about that, but Torch Tune is pretty cool. I'll link to their getting started guide as well below. And what everyone wants to know is what are we getting next? What does the future of Llama 3 look like? And if this model was incredibly performant, what will the next one look like? So the, the largest models of this are actually over 400 billion parameters in size, and they're not MOE. Again, I wanna mention that the biggest crazy thing about this release is it's not a mixture of experts model. So in theory, they've doubled down on kind of a more simple encoder only model. And it's really cool to see just simplicity maximize efficiency when you really hammer down on data quality. And they say these models are still training on their massive GPU clusters made up of H100s, but over the coming months, they'll actually release these uh, with new capabilities like, again, multimodality, ability to converse in multiple languages, and with a longer context window. And really the question here is how long will that context window actually be? And how much stronger will these overall capabilities be given how incredibly powerful just their 70 billion parameter model is, um, you know, handily beating one of the best models from Anthropic. And yeah, it's going to be very, very exciting. And they gave us a little bit of a sneak preview, at least with benchmark numbers. So they say to give you a sneak preview for, for where these models are today, and these might actually get better. They gave us some benchmarks, basically showing that the Llama 3 400B plus model, so it might be even larger, is scoring um, 84.8 on MMLU, and that the Instruct model is scoring even higher at 86.1. Now, obviously there are a few caveats here, but we're gonna get to that in just a bit. There are also a few different ways to try Llama 3 today. I'm gonna be showing you guys how well this works on Hugging Faces chat interface, but there's also just meta.ai, which is a really simplified interface that I'll show you as well. So another really curious quirk here is that Llama 3 8B in certain cases performs better than Llama 2 70B. But the most exciting thing is kind of where this model stacks up visually against a bunch of other really popular and performant models. So basically this shows performance in MMLU relative to active parameters and cost. And the best kind of area is in the upper left here. And what's cool is for now at least, we still see certain levels of performance that are better in Mixtral 8 by 
22B, clearly a much larger model. And the sweet spot is getting really, really interesting. So obviously these will only get better since they're open sourced and people will start to actually hacking on top of these. But I think the biggest takeaway here, as uh, Tian Li Kai says, is just better data is all you need. And Jim Fan, I think, said it best, saying that the upcoming Llama 3 400B model is going to be just undoubtedly a watershed moment in AI, because this is basically a GPT-4 class model, and we've never really seen that yet in open source. So the hope is it will get even better, but what's crazy is Llama 3 400B is actually as performant as GPT-4 Turbo, Cloud 3 Opus, and handily beats the best version of Google Gemini, Gemini Pro 1.5, which is just nuts. Like, like this, if this is true and this number gets even better, it will undoubtedly shake up the market. And of course, the why Meta would want to do this is you know, there, are, there are many factors as to why they would want this. Kind of as a humble brag to Microsoft and OpenAI and especially Google. But this is incredibly exciting. Obviously, today what we got is exceptional and I can't wait until we get this 400 billion plus parameter model that in theory is already being benchmarked and we just have to hope that this isn't also faked like uh, the Devon demo but yeah this is awesome. So as you can see here we have Metalama 370B instruct loaded up and let's see what we can do here. So first I want to see how well this actually works kind of as an assistant. They keep telling us it's good at that so let's see what, what their default task gives us here. So this is asking us how to make a delicious lemon cheesecake. What I'll say right off the bat is this model is incredibly performant, much faster than uh, Mixtral 8x7B, which of course there were a few ways I probably could have sped that up, but this is pretty cool. And for those of you who are curious, I am working on a tutorial today for how to run this on your own GPUs. Um, I'm gonna run it on a bunch of H100s just to show you what we can get, but this is awesome. So now I'm gonna ask it something a bit more practical uh, I'm going to say I need to fly to New York tomorrow morning. Which flight should I select from San Francisco? Now, obviously, it can't really key into very much, but I'm going to see what this actually does. So it's asking me what time I need to arrive, how flexible I am. It actually, as someone who's lived in New York, it gauges which airport might be best quite well, and it understands how to gauge risk in this quite well. Very interesting. And actually, there is an option for to allow it to use the web, so let's try this again with um, some extra information. So it struggled a little bit, which is probably more so with their scraping infrastructure, and obviously Google has every reason to make this hard for them, but it says, based on search results, I noticed that none of the flights listed are for tomorrow, April 19th, 2024. So it's assuming that we're doing something tomorrow, which is actually something a lot of these assistant models kind of miss. And this is actually quite good. Um, it was showing us it was having issues, but this is actually quite good. And it looks like if we opted for another option, it might give us something pretty interesting. So I'm gonna ask one more kind of web-based question here, and then we'll move on to some coding questions and writing questions. I'm going to ask, what kind of bread can I bake that doesn't have seed oils? So we're gonna see if this gives us a recipe or if it just gives us kind of a breakdown. Let's see what we get here. So it gives us the source and it looks like it's giving us just a recipe, which isn't bad. Um, I bet if I gave it more information about where I am, it might have suggested a local bakery where I could get bread that doesn't have seed oils. But let's move on to some coding questions. So one thing everyone likes to see is just a snake game. I'm going to do something a bit more interesting and say, can you build me a basic Tetris game? All right, so it's giving us the page structure. Now we're getting to the JavaScript. Well, that one thing I will say is this model is incredibly fast, uh, significantly faster than any, any Mistral model I run right off the bat. You can tell what it's thinking. Um, it seems like it's much more accurate and concise than GPT 3.5 Turbo in some instances. I'm gonna ask it uh, a few of my harder, kind of more, um, I guess, geospatial kind of reasoning questions, but I'm really impressed so far. So it got hung up on the last bit of that, but I'm gonna try one more question, which is my question about uh, creating a cached mammal broth set. Wow, that was incredibly fast. Okay, so it's using NumPy. Yep, this looks basically right. And it gave us a really concise definition of how it works, which is awesome. So I'm not sure why it got hung up uh, generating kind of those Tetris functions. What I will say is in terms of understanding where the next piece went, it got that function right. So I'm actually still pretty impressed here. 
Uh, now for one last question, I'm going to ask it kind of a AWS S question. Uh, I use a lot of GPT-4 uh, for just automating dumb infra stuff in Amazon's web services. So let me try this. So let's see what this gives us. So this is gonna have to reference a lot of Amazon documentation. It has to understand kind of what an AWS Lambda is and how that's different from a Python Lambda, which it's already gotten. One thing I did say is that I wanted to make sure that the S3 uh, transfer step is pretty quick. And let's see, so it downloads the frames. Uh, okay, cool. So actually, yeah, it's it's created a multi-threaded option to pull from S3, which is pretty awesome. And it also understands that we need an FFmpeg layer as part of this. So that was wildly fast. Wow, very cool. This is something that I've actually just, as a joke, like tried to do with uh, GPT-4. And GPT-4 actually, without a lot of massaging, kind of like threatening the model even, um, was not able to get this right. So this is actually kind of incredible. So now onto some creative writing because most of the feedback I've gotten from you guys is you want to see more creative writing and stuff outside of just coding, which I totally get. So let me say something here. Um, write me a small poem about automating growing yellow oyster mushrooms with a raspberry pie. So we'll, we'll mix up the coding and with a little bit of farming and some other things. So, wow, okay, so it understands what small or short is. I will say a lot of the creative writing models, they don't understand how to like restrict output reasonably, or they'll just start like writing endless haikus or poetry. Um, so here's what we got. In, in secret chambers hidden deep, a raspberry pie does quietly keep. A vigil over fungal delight, yellow oyster mushrooms growing bright. With sensors keen and code so fine, it tends the mycelium's subtle design. Humidity and temperature and light it guides to coax forth growth and banish hides. The pie gentle hum a soothing sound as it orchestrates the mushrooms round. Watering, misting, and monitoring too, a precise dance to bring them anew. In this underground high-tech lair, the raspberry pie, a fungal caretaker rare, nurtures the yellow oysters with a gentle hand, a symphony of growth in this hidden land. So it's funny that it thinks I'm going to do this in a secluded um, secret place. But that's awesome. I mean, that that's is massively impressive. It was quick. I didn't really have to even follow up at all. So clearly, the instruct angle of this is working. Obviously, I could use a more forced instruct prompt, which I might do in a later video. I might stream it. Let me know if you guys want to see that. But yeah, so this model is incredibly impressive. I don't think many of us thought Zuck was going to under deliver with this model. But um, yeah, if anything, if you want to be a great founder who does AI stuff, I think the de facto standard is now you ever, we all have to, have to have a gold chain, which that's a, a joke um, referencing the Silicon Valley TV show if you're old enough to know what that is. So yeah, amazing release. Uh, I'm glad that I got to share this with all of you. Um, if I missed anything or you think I'm wrong about something or you think Mistral is way better or you think GPT-4 is better, let me know in the comments below. I really want to know so we can improve our content and get some great discussion going on in the comments. Uh, as always, I hope you learned something. If you liked our video, please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you in the next one when we get to review Llama 3 400B+. It's going to be incredible. Thanks, everyone.